What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend. I'm back again, man. The one and only Keith Allen. How you doing today? Coming back at you with another installment of What Would You Do? Now, this is where we analyze pro players and we ask you, what would you do in their situation? Today, we're going to be looking at some of the best. I mean, we got Mongrel, we got Tifu, we got Clicks because there's some of the most knowledgeable players in the game, right? And so today, we're going to be, I want you to stick around for the entire video because we're giving you guys tips that's going to help your decision making. And let us know by the end of the video how many scenarios you got right. All right, guys, it's time to be live right now. It's time to be crazy, okay? I don't care who's next to you. I don't care who's in the house. You better say this with me, okay? It's time to sit back. Come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? Oh, that's a nice throw. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. Come on. Okay, so by the way, new to the channel is our exclusive pro analysis live streams. The only way that you can watch them is if you subscribe and turn on post notifications, all right? So sub now and you won't ever miss out. Also, we opened up a brand new Reddit form for you guys, all right? So you can post suggestions, you know, you can ask for help and anything constructive, you know, to help us make pro guys a better place. So be sure to go ahead and sub to that thread and share your thoughts, man. We're here for you guys. And if you want to take your game to the next level, ProGuys.com is there to help, all right? We got exclusive lessons, man, videos, and private coaches waiting 24-7 to help you guys out. Whatever you need to help you thrive as a pro player, you're going to find on ProGuys.com. So check out the link in the description to get started. Okay, so first up, we have Mongrel and a stack cash cup in game. Now, take a look at this situation, all right? Mongrel has about a thousand mats, one launch pad, and five fish. The sixth zone arrived, the storm just started moving, and Mongrel has one heck of a journey to get there. Now, how would you rotate here? Hmm. Question one run using enemy builds as cover or use your launch pad? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's launch pad time. You almost always want to save your launch pads for the fifth or sixth circle. So they're the longest runs, so that way, you know, you're going to save on materials as much as possible. And as we all know, materials are your lifeblood during the end game, right? So Mongo is going to tunnel his way in, and now that he's down to about 500 mats, he's going to see if he can find an impact frag to refresh his materials. He doesn't find the opportunity, so he doesn't force anything, all right? And that's really how it should be. Prioritize getting to the next zone. I know it's tempting, but you got to keep going. And only force engagements when you're about to run dry. So Mongo keeps tunneling in, trying to get as close to the next circle as possible. Okay, so notice how he makes sure to control as many structures as he can. So during the end game, you ideally want to control every piece in your tunnel so you don't get edited on. But speak of the devil, Mongrel doesn't control that metal wall. Oops. And uh, somebody makes an edit play on him. Okay, so at this point, with two enemies above him, he drops down to play it safe. If you were him with 140 materials left and the storm on your tail like never before, what would you do here? Question two. Use floppers in the storm, then rotate in, or stay low ground, but continue to work toward the zone. Well, there's a reason he's carrying all that fish, guys, all right? When this situation gets out of hand, you can always fall back into the storm and use your floppers. Almost no one ever expects it, so not only can it help you find cheeky limbs, which you're about to see beautifully executed right here. And I mean, like, right here. But it's also a way to survive when the going gets tough. How long you can stay depends on how many fish you've got. So make sure to gauge that before you make this play, all right? But just like that, man, Mongo's back in the zone in a top 10 situation. He goes on to get a few more kills, but unfortunately runs out of mats and finishes the game in second place. Still, not bad at all, you know, for how stacked of a lobby that was. Okay, guys, so now let's talk about high ground in the end game. Obviously, you know, high ground is the best position to be in when you want to close out the match with a bang. But at the same time, man, there's an incredible amount of risk involved. And sometimes going for that can really backfire pretty hard. OK, so to show that, let's look at Mongrel again. All right. This match, as he tunnels during the sixth zone, he slowly works his way upward to see if he can just get a flank on height. And it looks like he's almost got it. He's only one layer below. But I want you to consider the number of players alive. The fact that it's the sixth circle and, of course, his material count. I mean, knowing all that information, I mean, how would you play this? Would you contest the player on high ground or would you play it safe where you are and continue to tunnel in?
Well, Mago thinks about it, but decides to play it safe. Okay, but why? Well, first off, I mean, it's too early for him just to take height, especially with his material count. And solos, really the best time to take height is usually during the seventh or eighth circle. I mean, the only time that you can take it early is if you got at least 1,000 mats and some sort of mobility like a grappler or launch pads, right? If he were to take it now, he'd eventually be forced to drop down and find someone to kill from mats. And that's if you don't get into a cranking battle, which can always happen and lead to disaster. For example, take a look right here. With 600 mats, Mongrel cranks up from near the low ground to take height. The timing is right, but his position isn't optimal. Since he's too low, his opponent builds up on him, and it forces Mongrel into a straight-up creative fight, which he ends up taking, but at what cost? His mats are depleted, and now, man, he's forced right back down into his ultimate death. Oh, man! Come on, man! So, I mean, what can we learn from that? Well, you know, try to be within one or two layers of ultimate high ground before you crank up for it, right? So as to not give your opponent an easy time defending. And if things start to really get crazy, don't be afraid to give up. Remember guys, it's almost always better to be in the mid or low ground with materials than, you know, it is to be just controlling height with your mats running dry. Okay, on to the next clip, guys. This one features Tifu using simple yet highly effective strategies to obliterate two players. Things start off with Tifu whiffing a snipe. He probably should have taken his time with that one, but you know, either way, he does hit a couple of rifle shots. As he starts to close the gap, a third player starts shooting from Tifu's left, so he slows down. He reloads his heavy sniper, and once again, he assesses the third player's position. He realizes it's safe to move in. As Tifu pushes, he makes sure to place walls for cover, and he even stops to replenish his mats a bit. When he reaches this first player, he tries to build up, but the RPG says no, <laughs> and he gets shot down. Now, given the fact that he's about 250 materials, plus there's a third party nearby, should Tifu continue building for high ground or immediately box up where he's at? So the correct choice is boxing up because if Tifu tries to build fight man, he might get shot at by the third party, but notice how Tifu makes two boxes and puts cones on the floor. That gives him so much more control in this fight. And his opponent, who simply tries to W key in, gets blocked multiple times by Tifu's builds. A quick edit pump later, and that player is done for. Now the other guy, Tifu tracks their position carefully and he waits for a misplay before making a move. That misplay comes when they try to pickaxe Tifu's fully built brick. Always attack wood if you can since fully built brick takes 3 hits to break. Because of that though, Tifu can do a quick edit pump to crack their shields and you know now that they're weak, he can be a bit more aggressive. He edits out and uh, woo, his edits aren't the smoothest right here but he does eventually take height. Alright guys, so Tifu spots his opponent healing up in their builds. If you were in his spot, like what would you do here? Use your RPG or get closer in box fight. RPG all the way, my friends, <laughs> all the way, especially when you spot your opponent and can follow up with a pump shot combo. Tifu manages to do it twice here, and he makes swift work of this player. Okay, so now box fighting wouldn't necessarily be the wrong choice, but there's a bit more risk involved getting up close. You know, with the RPG combo play, there's almost no risk, and it pretty much guarantees free damage. <laughs> so those were some nice kills by Tifu there, but now let's get into an early game third party scenario with the Wager King himself, Clicks. Okay, so if you guys ever watch Clicks, you'll know that he just loves to play super aggressively right off the bat. And part of why he can do that is, you know, he practices his loot path. The better you understand your early game spot, man, the faster you can loot, which means you're gonna have an easier time pushing your opponents. Once he picks those chests up, he gets another one next door, then he goes to W key the player he hears in the yellow house. Clicks approaches very cautiously here, you know, making sure to start from the roof and carefully clear the house from top to bottom. He'll also crouch to minimize footstep, you know, noise and conceal his position. This is where things start to get a little bumpy. Clicks misses his pump shot and only gets a small tag in right here. He manages to take the wall and he goes in for a right hand window peek, which does give him the advantage. But still, his opponent lands a godly pump shot. Oof, it's time to fall back, buddy. Now, if you were Clicks, <laughs> like how would you retreat here to go up to hill? Head back upstairs or take the porta potty down the henchman lair?
Well, uh, he heads upstairs. It's a good thing, too, because it turns out there was someone in the lair and they're about to join the fight. Okay, you guys hear them come up? And now there's a third party in the fight. Clix hears them fighting, and while his health and loadout situation is pretty good for the early game, his mats are not. <laughs> so what play would you make here? Lead the fight and go farm up mats, or stay as silent as possible and wait for a third party opportunity? Well guys, leaving the fight to go farm up mats may not necessarily be the wrong play here, but in this case, Clix hangs tight and once he hears his opponent going at each other hard, he creeps in and he goes for the flank. Okay, look at that, it's perfect. Both opponents are right in the same box, so all Clix has to do is approach from behind and just like that, he gets two kills and an easy early game win. All right, guys, so let's do a recap of everything that we learned, all right? When it comes to the end game, do not be afraid to launch pad. And ideally, you want to save it for the sick zone, you know, AKA, you know, first moving. Also, don't force end game fights unless you're running out of mats. If your mats are fine, you know, keep rotating and just stay ahead of everybody. And while rotating guys, make sure to control every build piece in your in game tunnel or else you might just get edited on. When things aren't going your way and you have some floppers, drip into the storm. It'll not only buy you space, but it can also lead to some free kills your opponents won't expect. When it comes to taking high during stack solo endgames, make sure it's a later zone, typically the 7th or 8th circle. Also, get within a couple of layers so you don't end up wasting all of your mats. High tanks aren't for every game though, only when the stars align. When there's a third party present and you're in a fight, try not to build battle, right? Box fighting keeps you so much more hidden. And, you know, if you can employ good strategies like the 2 by one and proper peace control, you can easily come out ahead. If you got an RPG and you spot your opponents in their builds, fire your rocket and follow up with a quick pump shot. If you time it right, it's free damage and also almost no risk. Okay guys, so for the early game, the more you know your loot route, the faster you can push players and dominate your landing spot. And when given the opportunity to third party, yo, you gotta take it. Timing and approach is everything, man. So you need to be sneaky, listen closely, and go in when your opponents are hard at each other's throats. If done right, it'll lead to some easy, easy kills. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, back at you again. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for more, man. I know some of you guys have not subscribed yet. What are you waiting on? Come on. And leave a comment telling us what you would like to see next. Peace.